I was born in Berlin on November 29th, 1927. I was about five years old when Hitler came to power. And two years later, in 1934, I went to a neighborhood school. As far as I know, it was a German school. And I think I went there till 1937. My mother was not Jewish before she married my father, but then she converted. So all four of us, my parents, me and my brother, born two years later, were registered as Jews. Well, we were considered Jews according to the Nuremberg laws. And my mother, even though she was Jewish, by religion, was still considered an Aryan by the Nazis. During my school days, I remember one incident distinctly. I used to play on the street with other children and some boys one day asked me to say something in Hebrew. And all I knew was the Shema and a few blessings that I had managed to pick up. And I didn't want to say them. So I told the boys, I can't. I really can't say because they are sacred. You know what they did? They just pushed me into a corner and said, we'll beat you up if you don't. And so I had to. One day, I was on my way to school. And I remember this very clearly. I walked a few blocks from my home and I didn't notice anything. It was a usual normal day. So I thought it was just quiet, like just another day. But then I turned into the main street. The main street had a lot of Jewish stores. And the minute I turned into the main street, I noticed that the windows were smashed. The glass was lying on the street. Some of the goods were just lying scattered here and there. And what I still remember almost visually was the writing. On the glass that was not broken yet or on the walls next to the store was written the word Jew and then the star. What struck me then and really impressed me was that they were written in red letters. It was almost as if blood was dripping. I walked on and I saw more and more stars and writings on both sides of the street. I was frightened. I was bewildered. I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. I walked on maybe 13, 14 blocks because I had to get to my school. A couple of blocks before I reached my school, two of my classmates came running up to me and said, don't go any further. Then I noticed there were talks in hushed tones about synagogue burning. I said, is there synagogue burning? I couldn't understand it myself. And I said again, our synagogue is burning. Then, all of a sudden, it dawned upon me that there was a certain connection between the scenes that I had just witnessed 
and the synagogue burning. Something in me snapped at that point. I started yelling to the few people that were there on the streets. I started yelling, our synagogue is burning. And they just looked away. And then I went home. I turned around and went home. That's the memory I have of war breaking out. Soon after, my parents started panicking. They just felt the need to save us. And the plan that they hit on was to get us baptized. I fought it. I fought it with tooth and nail. And I said, I will never become a Christian. But my father continued to persuade me in a loving way. And I said to my father, you know, God will never forgive me. But he said, well, he will understand. You don't have to accept it in your heart. God knows what's going on. And he'll forgive you. And eventually, I accepted it. Me and my brother were baptized. Um, thanks, Deborah. I mean, I have had the privilege of being mentored by two um, of the very, what I, what I can say is they're fantastic mentors, Jennifer and Lynn. So thank you for that. And um, I have started since I became a storyteller, uh, which I didn't know I was one when I began the journey. So it's been a, definitely a long journey from a naive, um, you know, just a, a assistant professor of English literature, just talking and then, you know, you shift your entire teaching method to storytelling and you start noticing how kids connect so well. So for me, I mean, storytelling is such an important medium. And I also pursue the case for it being in the mainstream, mm -hmm. in the main, uh, main academia. Um, so one thing is there, you have, you immediately form that connect with your audience while you are narrating a story. You, you bring the pages to life. Um, you bring the emotions. You know, it's, it's a journey from apathy to empathy and sympathy, I would say. And then for this story, for this particular story, uh, when I read the entire uh, story uh, as the PDF and when I heard her interview, so for me, um, it was that shift in the emotion uh, mm. when she's asked to be, you know, to get baptized, you know, it, it was almost like that five phases of grief. You know, you pass that mm. five stages of grief. The first is denial. Mm. You know, she denies, I'll, I'll not convert. Mm. And then she's angry at her father. And then she bargains that, please let me, let me just continue being a Jew. And then she undergoes, you know, a sad phase, a depressive phase. And then finally she accepts. So that, you know, the major change in the emotion was what I wanted to focus on, mm. highlight on, and I wanted to get that point across to my audience. I think that came across in the in the earlier part as well, of the coming into Crystal Knocked and the, the, the emotions of what am I seeing and what am I seeing and what am I seeing? I mean, that, that you, you and do. And she sees the synagogue burning. She yeah. almost utters the words unknowingly. And after she utters, she then realizes what she has said. And then she repeats it. She keeps on repeating it and she can't take that shock in. Yeah. And she's doubly shocked that people are not responding. 
and she says, uh, I'm, I'm just yelling that our synagogue is burning. And you know what they did? They just looked away. So. Thank you. As, as you said, you know, choiceless choices. So, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you.